Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a 3D Endless Runner in Unity and welcome to episode 9. In this tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to add some UI to our level which will display just how many coins we have collected. Don't forget click subscribe and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in a series and everything else on game development on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So, we have in this section at least, eight coins. But we have no idea we've collected eight coins. So how do we display on screen just how many coins we have collected so far? Well, we're gonna do some fairly simple UI which is going to display how many we have gotten. So let's start by going to Game Object, UI, and let's click on Raw Image. Now this will create a new object down here called Canvas. It will create a raw image and it will create an event system. We don't need to worry about the event system just yet. It's the canvas we need to focus on more than anything. So because people have different resolutions and different screen sizes, we'll need to change the scale mode. So here on the canvas, we need to change from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. And I always like to have a standard 1920 by 1080 and 0 0.5 on the match. And this will scale absolutely nicely to pretty much any standard screen. So if we zoom out, we can see that that raw image is now just this white square in the middle of nowhere. What we need to do is we need to make this up here and make it like a little box that we can put some text on to make it stand out a little more than it currently does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the anchor up here and set it to top left. And what that will do is it will always make this object spawn relative to the top left location. So if we select the rec tool up here and move this object to round about there, and then we can resize maybe about that big. So width, let's say is, let's say 500. In fact, that may be a little bit too big, but we can always change it. And height, let's have as 100. And next, let's change the color down here to be completely black, but let's change the alpha so it is somewhat see-through. Let's change the alpha to 100. In fact, no, let's change it to 75. And what we'll do is we'll add another raw image on top of that to give a bit of an outline to it. So. On raw image now, hold control, press D, and then width, let's set that as a little bit smaller. So let's have that as 480 and height as 80. And if we zoom in now, we can see that we kind of have a little border around, so it doesn't look quite so bland. Let's now change the original raw image to coin display. And let's change the second raw image to um, coin border. And now let's drag and drop the coin border into coin display. So both of those objects will be attached and they can move together. So inside here now, let's right click and let's go to UI and let's go to text. Let's change the text color down here to white and let's make it a lot bigger than what it currently is. So instead of font size 14, let's have font size 40. Then we just need to resize to about there. And then we can readjust the alignment. So let's have it in the center and center. And let's have it as bold for now. And we may, in fact, we will change just how it looks a little later on with a different font. Uh, but for now, let's put coins. And I'm going to shrink that to about there. And then I'm going to hold control, press D once again, and I'm going to bring this to here. And then we'll set this to zero and change the alignment again to the left. So it would look like this in our game. Now, I know it doesn't look fantastic and we could do something else. Uh, but for now, all we're going to do is keep it as it is for now. So how do we make it so as this number changes whenever we collect a coin? Well, to do that, we need to go to our scripts folder and we'll go to collectibles and then right click, create C sharp script. Now, what this will be is will be a script that we can manage all collectibles. So, let me 
Change my caps lock there. Collectible control. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So there is something that we have to add to this script before we can do anything else really, because we're dealing with UI. That means we have to tell the script that we are going to deal with UI. So we need to add at the top in the namespace below using Unity Engine, we type using Unity Engine dot UI. And that will allow us to basically add values to text objects. So what that does is down here, we can say public int, and we'll say coin count semicolon. Now, this in itself won't work because we need to be able for other scripts to talk to this script. But we'll get around to that when we've written the bit of code that updates our screen. So we can get rid of the annotations and void start because we don't need them. And in void update, we are going to need to basically access this text one here, which I'm going to rename to say coin count. So that means we need to add in a variable. So public game object, and this will be coin count display with a semicolon. So that now means we change down here, coin count display. We need to access the component called text in that object. So we can say get component. Remember here, all of these are named components. And we need to access this component called text. And we also need to access this subcomponent also called text. But because this is the subcomponent, that T is going to be a lower case. So here we say in spiky brackets, text, because that's the name of the component we're accessing. And then dot, actually we have spiky bracket, open close bracket, dot text, because like I say, that's the subcomponent, and we make it equal to double quote, and I'll explain why in just a moment, plus coin count, semicolon. So the reason why we use a double quote here is basically because it's expecting to read a string or text. And because our coin count is a number, it won't be able to read it without having some text beforehand, even if that text is completely blank. So that way we'll still be able to display just a number. So how do we make it so as other scripts can interact with this script and change that coin count number? Well, the easiest way of doing that is changing it from a public int to a public static int. And what that will do is it will disappear from our inspector panel. So here, remember, we have the variables that are visible whenever we have a script. Uh, but if it's static, it will indeed disappear. Anyway, for now, let's save that script and let's head back into Unity. So if we go to our level control and attach that collectible script, and down here, you'll see we only have that one variable, even though we have two. Don't worry about that at all. The actual variable itself is still maintained inside the script. So coin count display is going to be, in fact, do you know what, before we carry on, let me just kind of close up those sections. Uh, so the coin count display is going to be that coin count. Now, if we press play, it will stay as zero the whole time, but it does mean that this connection is now live. So theoretically, if we were to change any number, it would update here. So let's give that a go in our script. So remember this collect coin script. Well, if we go into it and add another line of code in here. So we need to add one line of code that says, hey, collectible control, you need to add a coin because we've just gone through it. So after we have coin effects play, we say collectible control dot coin count plus equals one semicolon and save. Now, it's probably a good idea to make sure you do put this line of code roughly about here rather than after setting it uh, as false, because you could end up with a little bit of a problem. Um, you know, if you decide instead of setting it as inactive, you destroy it or something, 
or you stop it from working, uh, it means that the global script would not really work correctly. So either way, we're saying collectible control, add one to your current coin count. So let's head back into Unity. Let's press play. And if we collect these coins now, we should see that update. Excellent. So there we go. We now have the ability to add coins and that's exactly what we want. So one thing I will quickly uh, play around with before we end this tutorial is uh, the textures again. So remember this gold coin, if we hold control press D once again, and if we change the texture type to Sprite and click apply, we can actually apply this image to here rather than have it say coins. It's entirely up to you if you want to, um, but basically we can get rid of that coins text and replace it with an image. So let's go to game object, UI, but instead of raw image, we need to select just image. And let's change how this looks. So reduce the size to 80 by 80, put it around about there. And here where we've got the sprite, drag and drop that coin. And there we go. We've got the coin as an image rather than the word coin. Maybe reduce the size a little bit, 70 by 70. And let's bring that probably to about there. Yeah, I definitely think we should probably change the size of this at some point. Um, if we click on this itself, now there are obviously options that you can play around with here. Um, I mean, it, it just depends on how you want your objects to look. So for example, if we click on generate mitmaps and click on apply, it makes it look just a little bit smoother because it looked a little rough around the edges uh, when we applied it then. But if we generate the mitmaps, it makes it look just that bit smoother. Um, so if we press play, That's not too bad at all. I'm quite happy with how that's starting to look. Cool. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is let's kind of keep rolling with what we've created here and let's add in the ability to display how much distance we've covered in one particular level. Uh, let's also add in some background music as well to make this a little bit more exciting. So until that next tutorial, I'm going to go back to my scene view. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching, guys.